book before I subscribe to it. It is so good. It's so good. So. It's called How to Astro. How to Astro. Yeah. And I want to narrate it. So, we are already on page 39. It's here until getting recorded. But can you hear me? We like to ride with um, the natural air. But we'll turn on the air conditioning. Okay, so we had got to the part where. Okay, okay. I'm, I hope y'all heard Eileen, which makes sense. I'm going to repeat it. Um, Eileen said, read the parts which was most, that stood out the most. Because I put little bins in them. Okay, this one I was really like. There are no limitations on your inner self. The truth of the matter is that there can be communication back and forth to all levels of yourself. All you have to do is turn the dial. It is only because you have a highly limited idea of your own self that you insist that you cannot do things, that you cannot gain health, that you cannot gain wealth, and that you cannot gain recognition. There are no limitations to your inner self. There are no boundaries to enclose it and to deny your freedom. That's powerful. That's powerful. Ain't it bad? In a, in a time where melanated people feel like they don't have that. Right. When they feel helpless and hopeless. And not free. Right. And not free. Oppressed. Depressed. Oppressed. But this is a mental condition in which that can be changed by the use of your astral powers. Um, so, she's going she to show you more and tell you and read a little bit further on this on these on particular sciences because it's needed the inner self some call it the soul it is the most highly motivated powerful and conscious unit in the unit in the whole universe i want you to be different from the great mass of people to realize that this unlimited energy force is there for you god did not intend us to live in poverty to suffer ill health or miss out on the beauties of nature god wants you to live the good life but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches or her riches in glory. The abundance of things all around us are for us to use. The potential force that you have is now unbelievable to you. You must see that its potentials are limited. You must see that within you are the, poss- the personality beyond your comprehension. But have faith for the time will come when you will comprehend it. I'm not talking about the great personality of history. I'm talking about the little old you who are living in one small corner of a castle that could give you everything you ever dreamed of. Look at yourself in the mirror. Do you honestly believe that the personality that you are now conscious of is all that you are in total? If that is what you believe, you're really walking around dead. That's deep because Walking Dead is very popular. <laughs> Be the Walking Dead, I right. bomb it, everything crazy. Right. Right, everything is um Z Nation. Yeah, everything is a uh, um zombie. Walking dead, you know, walking dead. Mm-hmm. You know, but we have this victim mentality. So yeah. what he's saying is that yo, we got to move beyond the victim mentality, not just as individuals, but as a people, for us to succeed, so that we can have the angelic or ancestral help um that is um that that we need in order to take us into the next level of consciousness. Right now, we struggle, you know, um, with this because you have so many um, individuals out here um, on YouTube, and they they they're constantly propagating the mentality. You know, they're constantly promoting the victim mentality. So we have to move beyond that, um, at least individually. Hopefully, we can do it also as a people. You know, I'm always you know, I don't want to know about that, baby. I need to get to the thing in. Okay, but I, I, I stuff that thing in. But I, I, you were making a great point. I'm sorry I'm staying at this point. But, um, um, let me see. So, that's why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> that's why we're doing what we're doing. Because this is so exciting. But I wanted to, um, this, this, this man said, we are living in a, a mansion in the corner in the dark. Oh, he said a castle. He said a castle. Okay, now the other page that I thought was profound, um, before we get back to where we were. Um, 
affirmations, okay, here we go. Affirmations set the wheels of progress in motion. It is always best for you to form images and use words to your own life. Canned affirmations may not always completely fit your situation. However, I will give you an affirmation that I myself use. Remember, picture images as well as words must be used. We call, it, we call it just the treatment. Yes, and we so miss our treatment. Right. Reverend Ike and also um, pastor, our metaphysical pastor, Emmanuel on Bible Church. Um, pastor Murphy is going to do this every Sunday. I was an um, assistant pastor. So this is something in which that uh, helped break you. Listen to it and take it in and um, utilize it in your life. Bobby um, called me. Um, I talked to Bobby almost two years ago now, about a year and a half ago, and I interviewed him. That's one of the last interviews he did, and he talked about the Now Commands, and I and I told everybody that we had him. We even did a radio show on the Now Commands. This is part of the Now Commands. What Bobby um, was building about. Building on. Okay, so you can repeat it if you want to. So I'm gonna read it like that. Continuing now and for days and years to come. Continuing now and for days and years to come. I'm moving towards my cherished goals. I'm moving towards my cherished goals. My life is becoming rich with happiness. My life is becoming richer with happiness. A better economic condition and full contentment. A better economic condition and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor. Every action, enterprise, and endeavor. In which I wish to be involved. In which I wish to be involved. Is bringing increased rewards. Is bringing increased rewards. Life is making its joy and happiness easier to come by. Life is making its joy easier to come by. Good fortune is coming my way. Good fortune is coming my way. More and more frequently. More and more frequently. I'm learning how to share my good fortune. I'm learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. By helping others along the way. I am truly moving closer. I am truly moving closer to oneness with God. To oneness with God. To oneness with God. To oneness with God. And the full release of my inner self. And the full release of my inner higher self. So that's the affirmation that you read. And he was also going on to in this page talking about. I gotta read this. Many benefits from affirmations are yours. There is no better way to clear the decks for action, ridding your mind of negative, wasting thoughts, disturbing emotions, or exhausted inhibitions than through this first exercise. It cancels the hell in your life and builds up your consciousness so that it will be difficult to go wrong. Uh, so that affirmation that we just read, which we call or refer to as the treatment, Builds up your confidence so that nothing can go wrong in your life. It builds up your consciousness. Consciousness. Or your consciousness and confidence. And then it says it makes it easier to keep you on the right track. Your sleep will be deeper. You will wake up more refreshed and you will create a better environment for your mind to gain. That was a whole caravan. Good God. Why is it taking so long to do this? Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Your sleep will be deeper. You will wake up refreshed. And you will create a better environment from your mind to gain understanding and inspiration that restful sleep can bring. You have often heard the expression, well, let me sleep on it. Well, sleeping on it is no good. It can come from it. sleeping on it unless the decks are clear so that your astral helpers can get through to you. Deep, relaxed sleep will do the trick. That's deep. That's deep. The second important exercise must take place at the very moment that you wake up. There is nothing important enough to make you say that you do not have time, so you take time. After awakening, you should try to remember your dreams and everything that happened during that night. Remember and write down all that happened, no matter how trivial you may consider it. With practice, you will find extremely valuable ideas and inspiration, even precognitions of things to happen in your business or life activity, 
your astral helpers can really get through to you during deep, relaxed sleep. In this sleep, from all the negative, emotional tone wastelands of previous days, it may be valuable for you to keep paper and a pencil handy so that if you awaken during the night with valuable information at your conscious level, you can write it down. Okay, so within doing this exercise for two weeks, you would have broken the chain of consciousness. Which is necessary. Oh, it says two, it says 24 hours. Mm. With these two exercises, you have an unbroken chain of consciousness for every for each 24 hours. The evening and morning review will make it much easier to develop higher aspirations in 10 miles. miles. Merge on to US 35 West and 10 miles. In your work activity, home life, and every activity of daily living, you will begin at once to move towards oneness with the astral world and with God. Your astral helpers will bring your first hand knowledge of the secrets of the universe, and your astral power will be at its highest point. Wow. Okay, so then it goes on to where we were. It gave so many different um, testimonies, so we are definitely, and then somebody said we were doing it. Um, so my secret formula, he, he calls it RCC. It does not make up hypnosis, but a similar state of mind and body must be pronounced. Oh, you know what I need to go over? I need to go over the, t- the tension part. Because he was talking about how your ancestors your, or the astral helpers can't help you if um, you're dealing with tension. I was like, dang, that's deep. I got to do that. Tension reduces or eliminates the positive function of the physical body. Tension. And we be getting tense, don't we? Because we're uh, animated. Well, it's called hypertension. All right? High blood pressure is called hypertension. So tension... That is to a whole nother level, which is hyper, is what causes you to shut down and disconnect from the astral plane and from the astral beings, i.e. your ancestors. All right, so that's the point. Yep, in which the infinite energy comes from. So, talking about um, tension reduces or eliminates the positive functioning of your physical body. It makes you a slave to all that is negative. Damn. You can, damn. This is, because people will be like, I wonder why they keep on showing it, this, why getting killed, this, nobody gonna, and then they don't never get in trouble. Tension makes you a slave to well, all that is negative. That's the reason why they promote it and show it so much. But they, they have to basically we got to be off of your fears, which what promotes the tension factor within you. It's an affirmation. Right. It's an affirmation for stagnation. Is affirmation to manifest the slavery. Right. You cannot develop the higher sense of values made possible by the delicate mechanisms of the brain. You cannot make choices. Your mind is not a positive law unto itself. If no proper homeostatic action takes place, inattention mounts and mounts. The reverberating circuits will run at an even, an ever increasing rate until every part of the nervous system is subject to their negative will. If the danger signals keep breaking through to the automatic nervous system, you develop stomach ulcers, spasmodic colitis, heart troubles, malfunction in your sex glands and other glands, and many other psychosomatic difficulties to numerous to list. The symptoms of tension may be conformed to your central nervous system and be reflected in your involuntary thoughts and actions. It may reduce your confidence. It may make you indecisive. It may create restlessness, it results in continuous anxiety and worry, it makes you oversensitive, it results in con- continuous meaningless thoughts running through your mind, create boredom, make you lose interest, result in strange and peculiar thoughts, and make you touchy on subjects, and make you touchy on many subjects, or cause a dead center so that you cannot keep going. You go on and complete this list. Don't forget to include your own tension. We skipped that part of it. Like, damn. Tension is man's worst enemy. It is a fundamental cause of every devastation from a normal living and the basic cause of psychosomatic illness. It is the cause of unhappy marriages. It makes billions fail or not do their best on their jobs, motivate crime, 
It also motivates delinquency. It can put you in a mental hospital. Yeah. That makes sense, too. Yeah. Tension enslaves every phase of your life, making it difficult for the most powerful force in the universe, astral power, to get through to you. But astral power can get through in all but a very few cases where the person is more dead than alive. Now, it defined homeostasis. That basically is the ability to be in a dark room and heal during you know, your sleep. Okay. Um, it says, don't keep kidding yourself concerning tension. But I'm not tense. And some of my patients recently, and he, um, he said, said some of my patients recently. And he continuously brushed imaginary dust, or what it was, dandruff, off his suit. And the dust wiggled continuously in his chair and stopped one cigarette and smoked one cigarette after another. Of course, I can't sleep at night. The thoughts run through my mind continuously. I do some of my best thinking at night. When it's time to get up in the morning, I find that I cannot decide to put the project of my work, of my thinking, to work. But I'm not tense. Of course I have to sit in the hot tub of water every morning to get the pain out of my back. I don't like my job, but I cannot make my mind up to leave it. I don't get along with my father. I cannot make up my mind whom I should marry. If a girl shows too much interest in me, I make plans to drop her. But I'm not 10. I can relax my mind and my body. Fulfilling the first part of the secret formula. It should be quite obvious that to fulfill the first part of the magic formula, which is relaxation, RCC, something more than merely lying down and resting or making up in your mind or thinking and growing rich is necessary. I surely have convinced you that negative emotional states controlled by the involuntary nervous system are the forces which prevent getting the most out of life. It is an established fact that all emotions have their fullest way when the activities of the external brain are at the lowest ebb. Under hypnosis, there's a deep relaxation of the body and free play of the emotions and almost complete surrender of the directions of control of the thought process. Natural sleep processes the same condition to a lesser degree. My secret formula is called RCC. It does not make use of hypnosis, but a similar state of mind and body must be produced. Since the goal of RCC is conscious control and the full release of astral power, hypnosis does not produce the exacting conditions necessary to reach this goal. There have been many books written on how to relax. All of them make the same fundamental mistake. The authors of these books ask you to use a system that requires you to surrender voluntary action but at the same time increase action on the results you wish to achieve. This is a type of mental gymnasium that no one could possibly do. Here's just one example. Bend each foot first towards you and then away from you while your legs re remain flat, either on the bed or okay on the bed. Or bend your hands towards you at a time while keeping your hands, your arms flat. I have promised you that there will no longer be any drawn out methods of learning to relax. I intend to keep that promise. However, I want you to spend a little more time than usual necessary to see the whole process in motion. And this is the way you do it. Okay. So this is around where we were. Um, and this is page 39. Oh, the other page that I read after before this one was 29. And then the page before that one was. 20. Fulfilling the first part of the secret formula. Lie on your back with no pillow under your head. Your arms and legs should be straight. Legs never crossed. Your arms should be rested beside your thigh. Mmm, that smells so good. What is that, baby? Lavender? Is that something you made? Mmm, that's a peppermint. Okay. Your eyes should be resting beside your thighs. Your hands should be resting beside your thighs. Lie this way for a minute or two, always keeping your eyes closed during the exercise. Ease your thoughts out of your mind and let your attention be passively concerned with the general purpose of the exercise. You will notice that I stated that you should ease thoughts out of your mind. 
this is easier said than done. If your attention is too high and level and you will try to force them out of your mind, you will find the thoughts rather stubborn They refuse to move. Learning to eat thoughts out of your mind is important in carrying out the second step of the magic formula, which is concentration. Learn to breathe properly. Now check your breathing to make sure that you are breathing very deeply and slowly. Ideally, you should complete just six breathing cycles a minute. Practice this breathing exercise until you get it down to three a minute while preparing your body and mind for full release of the astral power. Do not suck in air rapidly. Expand your chest or raise your shoulders. Do not blow out air, but release it slowly. What I mean by deep breathing is to take air in very slowly. Keep inhaling a moment or two after you think you have all the air in your lungs will hold. Then exhale very slowly. Keep pushing air out for a moment or two after you believe that your lungs are empty. This is what I call relaxed breathing. Too many people just breathe off the top of their lungs. After you establish deep breathing, you will find that the process alone will help keep you relaxed. Okay, okay this will be fine. I got an arm. I got to go get that arm. That thing's not going to have on my leg. But you can build those still recording. Okay, we can go. So, the book is called um, How to Use Your Astral Powers. Uh, how to use your astral power again. All right. The guy name is R. D. Magnet. R. D. Magnet. All right. Good book. You definitely want to go and check that out. All right. We'll be doing this periodically uh, with various books. Um, you know, for y'all can go and get them because it's very helpful. Matter of fact, this book is out of print, so more than likely you're gonna have to go on eBay or somewhere in order to. You know, um, you know to get it, but regardless, you'll get some good stuff. You know, it's a good book, excellent book. I know I'm gonna be um, giving them away as gifts. Partner people that I think will come benefit from it because <laughs> this book is good. I know I'm gonna be giving them away as gifts. And I remember us reading it, and this is also somebody who gave it to us. We just love them. You know, it's a part of our family. So. Yeah. My homeboy Darius uh, put me onto this book over 15 years ago. Over 15 years ago, he put me onto it. Excellent book. I mean, yo, um, I normally don't like to read books of stories, you know, novels and those types of things, but um, he got a lot of stories in here. Most of the book is stories. Um, the formula, you know, that he does. Actually, only would it take probably less than three pages for the techniques, truthfully. But he got other stories in there. But um, even in between that, you know, there's, there's some good stuff. You know what I mean? Excuse us, we are traveling <laughs> to um, Ohio. We don't get ready to go see our fail. Oh, 
plants I've been seeing up here, because I always look out the window. The plants I've been seeing come up here, it seems like it's Schumach out here, and it seems like it's a red Schumach, you know, yellow Schumach. And then I've been seeing a lot of, um, what Well, they have like a lemon taste. Like the flower that it has, it has a lemon taste. But it does have a poisonous look like this. What else have I been seeing? Oh, a lot of mullet, but you always see mullet. Um, areas where construction, lots of construction and stuff in that, so the highways and stuff, it grows in that soil to help loosen it up. Oh, I see some cattail. And that's like because of the ditches. We like growing that water. Okay. It's a yellow book. Okay. Yeah, it's a concentration. Now, check your breathing to make certain that you are. Right. So, R, this one is R C C. So, R is relaxation, C is concentration. All right. Now, check your breathing to make certain that you are breathing very deeply and slowly. Ideally, you should complete just six breathing cycles a minute. Practice this breathing cycle until you get it down to three minutes while preparing your mind in mind for full release of the astral power. Do not suck in air rapidly. I read that. Expand your chest or raise your shoulders. Don't do it. Don't blow out air, but release it slowly. What I mean by deep breathing is to take air in very slowly. Keep inhaling a moment or two after you think you have all the air in your lungs that you can hold. Then exhale very slowly. Keep pushing out air for a moment or two after you believe that your lungs are empty. This is what I have called breathing, relaxed breathing. So many people just breathe off the top of their lungs after you establish deep breathing. You will find that this process alone will help keep you relaxed all day. Okay, so let's go. The same technique is the one that I've been giving you already for years. Is basically three breaths a minute. That's that's what he's talking about. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Each one is ten seconds apiece. Hence, is six. Six times ten, sixty one minute. Relax all day. That's what's up. I was taking you through a special exercise to help you relax. The time will come when you will be able to let go a moment's notice or better. Keep relaxed all day long. Now let us continue this exercise. Learning to concentrate. Keep easing thoughts out of your mind and passively attend to the task at hand. Now think of your toes and feet as relaxed. Through your mind, let go of these muscles in an easy manner. Put your attention on your ankles. Now you are introducing the faction of imagination. Imagine that you can see the muscles of your legs. Beginning with your ankles, slowly follow or trace the muscles that control your legs up to your thighs. Imagine that you can see the muscles that control your legs sticking out of your thighs. Mentally, grab hold of the ends of the muscles and imagine that you are pulling them up very tightly. At this point, you are conscious of the tightness with the tension in the leg muscles. You are mentally putting them under load. Hold them tight. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, imagine you see your legs dropping off. Then let go of all consciousness of your legs and turn your attention to your hands. Think of your fingers as relaxed and let go of your fingers and hands. Lightly center your attention on your wrists. Imagine you can trace the muscles up your arms into your shoulders and visualize these muscles through your imagination as sticking out your shoulders. Mentally grab hold of these arm muscles and pull them up tight. See them in your mind as under load. Take another deep breath. As you exhale, imagine that you see your arms dropping off. Let go of them and turn your attention to the muscles in your abdomen. 
it is easier to relax your legs and arms than any other part of your body so that exercise becomes a little more difficult from now on. Your attention is now on your abdomen. Think of the muscles of your abdomen as relaxed. Let go of them. Move your attention up to your chest and repeat the process as you continue to breathe deeply and to breathe slowly. After a little experience, you should begin at the point to feel rather light. A drifting feeling should be coming into your mind. Now spotlight your attention up and down your back, from your thighs to the back of your neck, and let go of these muscles. You should keep easing thoughts out of your mind and let the comfortability drift drifting feeling come in. Let your jaw go limp. Relax your cheeks. Mentally smooth out the muscles of your forehead and your scalp. As you learn to let go of your body and ease thoughts out of your mind, you'll learn to concentrate. The second step in the magic formula. Learning to use your imagination. Now put your attention on your eyes. Remember your closed eyes have been visualizing this whole process. Now let the visualization of your eyes sense a moment out of space. Through your imagination, let a mental image of some pleasant scene come into your, round, your surroundings. It makes no difference what the elements of the scene are so long as the scene is a project of your imagination. Now, repeat to yourself. I'm lying here relaxed and breathing deeply. I am on a mountain top. The sun is shining brightly. Everything is peaceful and serene. I'm lying in the shade and tall, soft grass. In the front of a beautiful lodge, mountain lodge. The lodge is made out of logs. The brown logs are in sharp contrast to the green of the pine. Fir and spruce trees. These trees are tall and stately and cool. Refreshing breeze causes them to sway light slightly. This breeze is bringing the beautiful smell of the pine trees and of the lemon grass. It makes me feel fresh. We rested and relaxed. In the distance, I see mountain lakes, the surface of which are as smooth as glass. As I look at the lakes, my mind becomes peaceful and quiet like the surface of the water. My mind is becoming more and more relaxed, and as a drifting feeling is increasing. Now I'm looking at the beautiful blue sky above. I see bowlowy white clouds, lazy drift by. Everything is becoming more and more peaceful and serene. I'm feeling a oneness with goddess and the total universe. Mental action images, extremely important. I have illustrated what is meant by a mental action image. As you become expert in forming these images, you will become more conscious of the emotional tone associated with the image. Years ago, I woke up during a rather dull philosophical lecture to hear the professor say, Ideas tend to work their way out into action. Since the professor told us at the beginning of the course that all we would get out of it was two hour credit, I was a little shocked for this concept that made the course very much worthwhile. The body will reflect what is going on in the mind. Things first happen in your mind before they become reality. I have just told you about a woman who spent 50 cents for a lottery ticket that won her $1 million. She stated that she knew she was going to win, and she won. I had already made it clear that there is no limitations in time and space as far as your creative power or power to change yourself is concerned. I have called your attention to the fact that the only limitation occurs in your thinking. You keep putting mental action images in your mind of what you want your life to be like, and your mind will make it possible for you to materialize these images into physical reality. Birth into the physical plane. Mm. That's how we got our store. Yeah. Your mind should be wishing at all times. Your mind should always be wishing, and your whole objective should be 
trying to realize your wishes, in fact. Um, all your goals, all the things you seek to do or be, whether negative or positive, are the product of your imagination. As you move towards your goals and imagination, it will give way to your Beautiful Yet I have written thousands of reports on people who never imagine anything for themselves. The man who gets a job, the woman who gets married. Years later, you will find the men on the same unskilled labor job while the women have grown fat and unattractive. Union lenders tell them to strike, and they strike. It never occurs to them to work towards their higher level job that will automatically bring in more money, security, and satisfaction. When Henry Ford imagined that he could produce a good, low-priced automobile, people said it could not be done. When he imagined that he could steal his information from... Do I have to call? I'll be forgetting, but what was he saying? Well... George Washington Carver worked with him um, to transform um, his tires, so right. the tires weren't working. Right, various elements of peanuts and so forth and so on, and make it into um, some type of rubbery substance that would become tires. So y'all know this power, this power has been kept from us permanently. That's why the slavery programming Attention. Um, when Henry Ford imagined that he could steal this information from George Washington Parker, but you know what though? Even in here, his perspective for Henry Ford, even me doing that was showing tension. Yeah, because it was in here. I was like, wow. He was talking about how his mother was like that, and she lived next to Henry Ford's sister, and. They asked them to borrow five hundred dollars because he would pull up in that car. She said, I remember he would pull up in that car three times out of week. And then she said that they asked her for five hundred dollars, which her his mother could have done. And all the people who had invested in that business, all of them became millionaires. And then he even went on to say about him reporting that he would always get a thousand to five hundred dollars every day from his secretaries and put it in his pocket. And he was just planting it in stuff. Like just putting it everywhere, trying trying to just put it somewhere because he knew he was going, he just had so much. And then the other one, they were talking about fat and unattractive. The lady, she was um, pregnant with her fifth child, and her husband was going, came to him, and was like, Look, I don't want to be with her no more. I'm going to stay till the baby's born, but I am out. And then when he talked to her, she was like crying through her whole story. And she was like, I don't want to be I just want him to stay. I want to be able to take care of him and my children. And that's it. But she had gained so much weight. She was smoking constantly. And now they're doing good. You know, they're doing good. He had lost his job, so now he rich. But they were saying, what good was it for to have five children that were fatherless, you know, and a mother's health who was failing, and, you know, a man who moved out and was wanting to maintain them still, and then, you know, and then he was also talking about how it was going to be psychologically damaging to the children. So he helped them. This is really a good book. Okay, so that's what he was referencing. Um, it says, I have already made it clear that there are no limitations in time and that there are no limitations in space as far as your creative power or power to change yourself is concerned. This is where the willingness psychiatric chip is being corrected. I have called your attention to the fact that the only limitations occurring is in thinking. You keep putting mental action images in your mind of what you want your life to be like and your, mind, your life will make it possible for you to materialize these images into physical reality. Your mind should be wishing at all times. Your mind should always be wishing. Your whole objective should be to try to realize your wishes in fact. Your whole objective in life should be to try to realize your wishes. That's why I be trying to rub my jeans. My third eye. Because I'm trying to break this, this spell too. The stuff these people are doing the latest spend 50 cents on a lottery ticket and one um, a million dollars. And they only was practicing this stuff in two weeks. That's why I said two weeks together, because remember everything was two weeks. Then what else? Then the man, he was also, oh my God, that was a good one too. The man, he was always doubtful. He was talking about the other guy wins. I never win, the other guy always wins. He said he practiced this stuff in two weeks. He went and won $15,000. He 
And this, then six months later, he won $200,000. And they also got the story in here with a man who also realized the money part, and then, but he didn't have love. So when he talked to him again, he's like, brother, you know, I got all this money, but I'm having to, don't forget your training. You know, so he did that for his family, too. They both had stepped out, da da da, da. So they, had, they ended up coming back. It just really, it just really just touches on everything. But to stay focused, your mind should always be wishing, and your whole objective should be to try to realize your wishes. In fact, all your goals and all the things you seek to do or be, whether negative or positive, are the products of your imagination. As you move towards your goal, imagination gives way to reality. Yet I have written thousands of reports on people who never imagine anything for themselves. The man gets a job, the woman gets married. Years later, you will find the men on the same unskilled labor job while the woman has grown fat and unattractive. I read that. Okay, National Cash Registry Company failed to recognize the, out, the outstanding ability of a number of employees who moved on to become billionaires. Millionaires and top executive. Kettering was one of those men. He rented an old barn and went to work on a self-starter for automobiles. The physical perception of the problem was that it was impractical to put a large enough battery in a car that would turn over the engine and start the car. Many thought it could not be done. Kettering did it. His imagery goal was so strongly fortified by positive emotional tone that failure after failure did not stop him. The Astra Helpers finally got through. The magic formula further explained. The cardinal principle of my magic formula is conscious relaxing of the instrument called your body. Concentrating on mental action, images that will open up all astral power channels and contemplating oneness with God and the whole astral world. Then you may live a truly fulfilled life as God intended you to do so. It is only then that it is only then that health, wealth, and happiness can be yours. You know what, too? I also want to read. Um, you remember that part? Well, it, it's in here, y'all. And that's also what makes you be more open to this. Because certain people get to a certain age and it's time for them to tell the truth. And that's what this book is. Somebody just is in here telling the damn truth. But it's in here and it says that there were civilizations in the Americas um, 10,000 years before this civilization. It shows you. And then it ended up calling them the Mayans when we all know the mother and the father of the Mayans is the old man. So I wanted to say that too. What page is that? But it was towards the beginning. Like on page 11. Something like that. Page 8. Page um, 9. The big difference between my system and others. All the systems of self-help in print today end up by teaching you to relax. Think positively and have faith that God or Goddess will help you. In other words, they all keep you on the first two levels or dimensions of the universe. They do not even tell you anything about the other five levels. I want you to experience the power that can come from all seven dimensions of the universe. I want you to know where they are. I want you to visit all or any of these seven levels at any time you wish. I want to expand your consciousness so that you know the universe and your relationship to the universe. Where is the astral world? I sincerely hope that you are not one of the great majority who believe that when you die, your soul goes, your soul goes to some far off place called heaven or hell that never the twain should meet. Don't ever get that idea that they're going to roll out the red carpet for you and personally escort you to the throne of the goddess. As an actual fact, when you die, you do not go anywhere. All that happens is that your astral body leaves your physical body, and your astral body enters the physical body at birth, giving you life that would not exist without it. Wow. As an actual fact, when you die, you do not go anywhere. All that happens is that your astral body leaves your physical body. The silver cord is cut. astral body leads your physical body at birth, giving you life that would not exist without it. It came into your physical body through your soft spot, or you came through your mother's zakat. 
The seven levels of dimension of this earth plane are right here. They are just differences in frequencies or vibrations. If you can understand that the telephone company can send many messages over the same wire at the same time, then you can understand that the nature of the astral world is like that. Many different stations come in over your radio and television. They operate under different frequencies. Some days, a great inventor is going to develop a TV with high enough vibrations or frequencies to tune in all the astral world. What a great day that will be. Your astral body can come and go from your physical body. There are authorities who claim that we never leave the upper astral world to return to the physical level. They tell us that every night when we sleep, our astral body returns to its more familiar surroundings, friends, and, and um, duties. You can learn more about what your astral body does while you are sleeping by carefully remembering your dreams. You will remember that I called your attention at the end of the chapter to the need to feel the gap of consciousness. Dreams are a dead giveaway of the secret life of your inner self. So why don't you resolve the right that very minute to become better acquainted with the total universe and the God within you? It is unfortunate that so many people regard departed souls as ghosts. Something undesirable and something to be afraid of. As an actual fact, there are hundreds of spirits all around you this very minute. They are probably not paying any more attention to you than you are to them. Getting your first proof of the spirit world for a moment Look out a window and concentrate on what you believe to be as an empty space. If you could see, hear, and apply all your senses to all your levels of the astral world, you would be aware of a great deal of activity in that empty space in all space. You can easily get a little better idea of the activity above the physical plane by carrying out the following exercise. I love when they give some stuff that you can apply, you know? Because that makes you know that they really are striving to help you develop more of your abilities, more of your gifts. You know, instead of following, you know, um, or discouraging. So anyway, he said, get as relaxed as you can and concentrate on any space out in the open. Just keep looking as though you were seeing something. Space somewhere will soon be filled with silver streaks. These silver streaks are left by the spirit as they fly or move rapidly above the astral world. You are sleepy. Yes, are you sleepy? Huh? Is you on? <laughs> Come on, Cookie. Say something. I leave that Libra in him and um he be falling asleep when he get in the car. He can't do that. He done got better. Yep, yeah, you got an hour left. He done navigated the whole way and I'm gonna be coming with ideas to read this. Baby, do you want me to um stop and um let you let you I'm ready to start with some dance. Okay. Okay, like, get as relaxed as you can and concentrate on any space out in the open. I'm trying to do some of these techniques. I see. You can't be doing them behind the wheel, though. I wasn't doing it like that. I'm just relaxing. Dude, relax. Because you saw that I have to do a long She lived in her license plate. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to Sometimes the numbers is that you play the numbers. Oh, you're supposed to look them up in the Kabbalist and start a media. Um, let me see. Get as relaxed as you can. Okay, maybe I ain't gonna read that again. You may have to repeat this exercise a few times, but do not give up. Keep at it until you see these silver streaks. To me, it's quite a beautiful sight as I drive down the street on a foggy morning to see thousands of silver streaks darting in all directions. That's what I'm showing you at the beach. What you say? No, went to um, Miami two weeks ago, and guess what? See, I was showing her, look, she can see the um, silver um, streaks that he's talking about. 
They're all in the atmosphere. That's astral energy. That's prana, chi of key energy. Indeed. Ooh, indeed. Okay. And we also, um, we also take that day too. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I got a coupon code. I am inspired. And, um, uh, Gotta keep on calling my Proceed to the route. Yeah. But we're gonna go to the gas station. Um, so if you want to use that, it's all the gas station. On www.dockalimelbay.com. Also, please go to the gold fund because in that, because we already did it. So for some of the bills, we can put it directly towards the five west. And I know we got a lot of bills to rebuild it, but we did decide to take everything from the old space and bring it over to the new space because we can't afford to buy it again. Um, okay, so the astral world is but a narrow band around the earth. All seven dimensions to the root. can coexist. If they got a limit in there, I like a land of a name. Okay, it says, to me it is quite a beautiful sight as I have drove down the street on a foggy morning to see thousands of silver streaks starting in all directions. Oh yeah, we were able to see the golden ones. And in Miami, because the chi energy was so powerful from the ocean, like I was being able to see. I was able to see without these. And I'm loving that. But this, um, I'm about to have these astral um, helpers heal my eyes. Um... Okay, it says, to me it's quite a beautiful sight, and I know that my friends are all around his astral friends. The astral world is but a narrow band around the earth. All seven dimensions can coexist in the same area. It may be a little difficult for you to understand. You do know that all frequencies put out by radios or TV stations occupy the same space. Our spirit friends operate on a different frequency. The higher the frequency, the more advanced these spirits are. On the physical level, our frequencies are low. You are leaning, you are learning to not only release astral power, but you will learn to identify your astral helpers. So take an inventory of your childish beliefs and get rid of them right now. One of my childish beliefs was that I needed glasses at 10 years old. I'm hoping that'll be a childish belief and I can get rid of it. Okay, instant content with the astral helpers through psychic space travel helps you gain astral power. That's chapter three. This may well be one of the most exciting chapters of my book. I have done an average amount of earth travel, but psychic space travel is really something else. Wow. I need to wait for Alina to get here. I want him to enjoy this. So I'm going to cut off.